Um, I guess this is the only time that being colonized ever worked in my favor. Okay, okay. I get it. You want to permanently settle here in Canada. Well, I'm gonna let you guys know now that applying for PR is not easy. And I mentioned that in my previous misconceptions video, so do check that out. You probably even seen me rant about my immigration problems in this video. But, there's a big but. While PR may be challenging, it still is very much possible to obtain, especially if you understand the grand scheme or like the inner workings of express entry. And that's what I'll show you guys today. Hi guys, it's Rachel and welcome back again to my channel. In today's video, I'll be focusing on the main core of express entry, which is the CRS score. Now, you may be wondering, what is CRS score? Well, CRS is short for Comprehensive Ranking System. Wow, big words. So let's think of it this way. CRS is your teacher and it will grade you according to your performance. Your performance here is dependent on how well you speak English, your study background, your age, even your marital status. But more importantly, it also gives you a score on what kind of job you do and how long you've been doing it. All of that is taken into consideration whether or not you meet the cut to immigrate to Canada as a PR. Okay, before I jump to the next topic, big announcement. I made a TikTok, you guys. I never thought that this day would come, but I'm all for sharing valuable information and that's why I set up my TikTok account. Sharing information there is much more condensed, so if you're the type of person that wants information right away, then check out my TikTok. Anyway, back to the main topic. Did you know that there's actually a way for you to calculate your CRS score before even submitting an express entry profile? Just type CRS tool on Google, it should redirect you to their website and yeah, you'll answer like 10 questions and at the end, it will generate your score. It's very beneficial, especially if you want to see the biggest factors that contribute to your CRS score or if you simply just want to know what areas you can improve on to maximize your points. Now I've actually computed my score beforehand and it came to 465. Now let's see how my score competes with the recent round of invitations or the recent express entry draw. Again, express entry is kind of like a lottery where draws happen usually every two weeks and IRCC releases the CRS cutoff score. If you scored higher than the cutoff, you automatically get an invitation to apply for PR. If you scored lower, well, I'm very sorry, you won't get an invitation, so better luck next time. And lastly, if your score is equal to the CRS cutoff score, you must have submitted your profile at a certain date and time in order to get your ITA. It kind of works like a first come first serve basis. So being prompt or submitting your express entry earlier on will benefit you in this type of situation. Okay, so the recent draw happened just yesterday, September 30th, 2020. First and foremost, it's a no program specified draw, which means all the programs are eligible to get an ITA for this round. It's basically an all-inclusive draw, so whether you're a CEC, FSW, FST, PNP applicant, if your score is higher than the cutoff, you get your ITA. Of the hundreds of thousands of applicants in this program, 4,200 people got an invitation to apply. The cutoff score was 471, take note of that. So the tie-breaking rule is for people who have the same score as the cutoff score, so it specifies the specific date and time that they should have submitted their profile in order to get an ITA. But okay, main focus here is the score, which is 471. I calculated my CRS score and I got 465. So I'm short by like six points. So what does this mean? Um, basically it means that if I were to be part of this draw, since I'm five points short, 
Unfortunately, I don't make the cut and I will not receive my invitation to apply for PR. Aww. Which means I will have to wait another two excruciating weeks for the next draw and hope to God that the scores drop. Now, you may be wondering, Rachel, how do I maximize my CRS score then? Well, guys, IRCC actually released a score grid for Express Entry and it's available on their website, which I'll link in the description box below. Now, um, it's a bit too much to delve into each detail found in that grid, so I'll just summarize my key findings. Okay, key finding number one is the provincial nomination program. If you get a nomination from your chosen province, you get an automatic 600 points for this. So for example, the last draw was at 471. So if you get a nomination from your province, you get 600 points, which is an automatic invitation to apply for PR. Key finding number two. Aside from the PNP, there are three other top contributors to your CRS score. And that is your number one, your education. You can get a maximum of 150 points. Your English, second, and you can get a maximum of 134 points. And third is your age, and you can get a maximum of 110 points for this. If you're single and if you apply for express entry between the ages of 20 to 29 years old, then you will get the maximum score for the age criteria, which is at 110 points. But if you're married or you have a common law partner, it's okay because you'll just lose 10 points. So you'll get 100 points for this criteria. 19 year olds will get the same score as 30 year old applicants at 105 points in the age criteria. And unfortunately, if you're above 30 years old, your score for the age criteria will slowly drop. So I guess we can say that Canada really likes the young working class and they see them as an economic benefit to the country. Another important factor that contributes to your CRS score is your English. This is the only time that being colonized ever worked in my favor. <laughs> but yeah, kidding aside, do take your English proficiency exams seriously, like, like, like seriously. But it's already an expensive exam to take at a whopping 300 Canadian dollars, almost 12,000 pesos for this exam. For that price point, um, you'd want your first exam to be your last. Next, um, for obvious reasons, the higher education you attained or achieved equals a higher score. Wow. So yeah, congratulations to all the PhD holders because you will get the maximum score for the education criteria, which is at 150 points. All of those years of studying and sleepless nights finally paid off. Maybe. But if you're a commoner like me that barely made it through undergrad, um, good news because all those procrastination and cutting classes will get you a hundred, a hundred twenty-eight points. And mind you guys, this is just twenty-two points below PhD holders. So. Uh, something to ponder on. Getting an offer of employment also helps. You get 50 points for an LMIA or a labor market impact assessment, which basically means that you have a closed work permit because your employer himself or herself sponsored you to stay here in Canada. Your Canadian study and work experience is also a big player in increasing your CRS score. That's why you see a lot of international students take three to four year programs like undergrad here in Canada and then with their postgrad work permit get to work an additional three years in the country. And with that seven year investment, they can later on obtain PR status in Canada. So yeah, that's something also to consider if you want to immigrate to Canada. 
So guys, I actually have the letter with me where I got my ITA to apply for PR because I qualified under the CEC class. And I'm taking a look at my score now. Let's see the factors that contributed to my score. Um, age was a big factor. I got 110 points. I'm 26 years old, I'm single, so I got the maximum score there of 110. For level of education, I got 128 points because number one, I finished a one-year program here in Canada. And secondly, I got my degree from the Philippines Assess and it came out to be a bachelor's degree in Canada. So with that, I finished two programs with one being longer than three years and I got the 128 score. Because I got a relatively high score in my IELTS exam, I got 122 points for this criteria. So it's really good. Another one is my Canadian work experience. So fortunately, through the post-grad work permit program, I was able to gain one year work experience here in Canada. And that corresponded to 40 points in my um, CRS score. And then I also got an additional 50 points for the skills transferability factor under education. So the total of that came up to 450. I met the cutoff score in May 15, uh, just a couple months ago. And then I got my invitation to apply for PR. Anyway guys, that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope that this video was able to give you a better understanding of how uh, express entry works specifically in understanding your CRS score um, If you do have questions about this feel free to comment it down below Also follow me on my socials Instagram and TikTok for more updates on immigrating here to Canada Again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video I hope that you're all safe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers